This is the Big Woods Bucks Podcast. Come explore the big woods and timber in North America with your host, Maine Master Guide and Deer Tracking Expert Hal Blood. Listen to Hal and co-hosts Lee Libby and Joe Cruzy as they unlock the secrets of Big Woods Whitetails. Each episode will provide valuable insights in the tried and true system Hal has used for the last 40 years to scout, locate, and hunt mature Big Woods bucks. Listen and laugh as the crew discusses Hal's legendary adventures and learn how to apply a lifetime's worth of lessons from the Big Woods to your own hunting and outdoor adventures. Welcome to the Big Woods Bucks podcast. I'm your host, Hal Blood, sitting here at Pylon Lodge again with Joe Cruzy. Hello. Lee Libby. Hello. And once again, Rick Labby. Hello. Back by popular demand. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Rick said he had a few more stories he could tell, so he decided we better have him back on. So everybody knows it's deer season's begun here in Maine. Probably other places haven't quite started yet, or maybe they have, but we're going to... Uh, Swap some deer stories, give you some tips. And what we're going to do uh, throughout deer season here in Maine throughout the month of November is we're going to uh, we're gonna up the game a little and we'll do a podcast every week so we can keep you updated on what's going on here. And, and uh, we'll get emails from you and pictures, I hope, of bucks you're shooting. But Hopefully we'll have some to post too. Yeah, maybe we will. We'll Hopefully. Get- we're going to get the game pole set up today out here, and uh, Joe said we can put the, uh, what do you call that camera? A webcam. A webcam. <laughs> so we're going to put the webcam. <laughs> what do you call that camera thingy? <laughs> <laughs> Joe's going to put. It is a difficult term to remember. <laughs> <laughs> we love it when Hal shows his age. Uh, so we're going to have a webcam out there. So Don't you, you can- look at that at 4 a.m. every morning to see if there's snow on the ground? I, do. I don't get up at four. Yeah, he I looks do. out his he looks out his window. <laughs> right. Yeah, I can I can lay in bed and look out the sliding glass door. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't have that luxury. No, yeah. we're gonna. So you use this webcam to check it? Oh, always. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're good. gonna. Uh, wow, we're gonna be able to. You'll be able to see the the deer on the pole if we get any. That, nice. That's it. Uh, the webcam's we on will. Lake, LakeParlinLodge.com <laughs> for anyone that doesn't. What is it? Gone to that LakeParlinLodge.com. Yep. Put that in your favorites. Yep. You might catch Joe out there in his skivvies trying to start his truck, too. (laughs) Might. (laughs) It takes starter fluid lately. My glow plugs are screwed up. That's Dodge. Uh No, that's on my Ford. Oh, shit. (laughs) Listen to him shut up. (laughs) I don't discriminate. I've owned them all. I I really couldn't care less about brand. Uh, They're all good when they're running. Right. Yeah. So, Lee, you said you lightened your workload so you can deer hunt this year. I did. I did. Thank you to my crew, my staff, the boys and girls over there at Summit Homes. Yeah. Realize how important this time of year is to me. And uh, the office actually took their vacation last week in anticipation for (laughs) me not being around as much. But uh, I'm very fortunate in that I don't have to be there for things to run smoothly. So, yeah. Looking right. forward in, to it. In fact, maybe good. it runs smoother. So they say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So they say. Yeah. <clears throat> Lee and I got to spend a few days together last week or the week before, whatever it was, moose hunting. That was a good time. Yeah, good time. I didn't even yeah. think you liked me till we spent a couple of days. And then... I, I never said I liked you anyway. <laughs> I, just, I just said I didn't good know, time. I didn't know if we'd, got, <laughs> if we'd gotten over that fence yet or not. But. Yeah. yeah, it was pretty good. <laughs> we almost... We almost had an awesome, well, it was an awesome encounter, but on the, uh, uh, it was the last morning, I guess. Yeah, last morning. We walked morning. in two, yep. 200 yards from the truck, and we're walking down a skid trail. It was Lee and I and, and uh, the hunter, and all of a sudden, I mean, 50 yards from us on the other side of this green growth, we heard a cow just let out a bellow, and we're like, I yeah. mean, it was, we were Surprise. like on top of her, but unfortunately, the, the little spike that was with her showed himself, but the big one never did, so. no. It was a it was a good hunt. Uh, we had a disabled vet that week. Yeah, and uh, we stretched his legs more than I think he had had them stretched in a little while. I think he liked it at the end of the week. I think it was a an eye opening experience for all you folks out there that think you can still ride around in a truck and shoot a trophy bull. That doesn't happen anymore. Those things uh, we're hunting those like deer now, and to get in there and find oh, yeah. a big one. That's what you got to do. Definitely. Yeah. 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 He got, 
he got it off to a little bit of a rough start that week, didn't he, Lee? Yeah, well, you know, I'm pretty lucky. Yeah, I and know uh, so Monday morning, seven thirty, I get a fifty-five incher with beautiful fronts and big palms standing there at thirty yards, and he was hunting with an A ten, and uh, he a- pulled A R ten, A R ten, sorry, yeah, and uh, he pulled up. <laughs> he had the old warthog with him, broadside yeah, shot, and he pulled the trigger and it went click, and uh, so then he tried to rack another one in, didn't work, got jammed up, and his dad was there as the the sub and I says, can you get a shot? And I think the dad wanted the son to shoot it yeah, so badly that he just waited and that, that bull walked off. And I thought to myself, I wonder if they realize what just walked off. Yeah. You know, and we spent the rest of the week, he had two more opportunities to shoot smaller bulls and chose not to. And I think after seeing that one Monday morning, it's a that common set story. The, that set the yeah. bar for him. It's a common you know? story. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But we had a good week, and and uh, he uh, he definitely he definitely got in shape because it is funny what just a few days of walking all day will do. It'll get you good, right going. And yeah. Oh, yeah, that first day two miles was about tops for him and his dad. And Friday, Joe jumped into the game and stretched him out. I think six miles. On the GPS, yeah, six something, or seven, like that. something like yeah. that. Yeah, it's a good day. So it's good. And yeah, he said, something. he yeah. said at the end of the day, I feel better now than I felt in a long time. Yeah. So yeah. <clears throat> but we ended up that on. He had to leave early on Saturday. Um, he had a commitment on Sunday. He had to get back to. So I ended up jumping on with someone else there that we hadn't filled a tag yet, and it was the closest I've ever been to the end. It was 13 minutes left, and we shot a bull, and it wow. was a good hunt. We went yeah. in. We ended up having to pack them out. So. Yeah, it was it was a good time. They got the full experience. I scooted out just in time. Yeah, you did. <laughs> but the funny thing is, is that <clears throat> we're over there, and I, it was it was an area where I just barely had like my cell coverage was in and out. And the moose hits the ground, and we get down to it, and we're standing over it, and everyone's congratulating and high fiving, and my phone rings, and I'm just sitting there because my mind's going, all right, it's it's dark right now. We got to pack this thing out. This is who we have here. And I remember when I was walking down. When, uh, cause Colin, who was with us, is actually the one he spotted that bull across the road and he got a hold of us. And it was, I don't know, 20 minutes or a half hour later, we got up there and started hunting down through there, just still hunting for him. And, uh, so we, we killed him. And the whole way down through there, I was thinking, if we shoot this thing right now, this is going to be a long night. Yeah. You know, but <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, it wasn't that bad because right after we're sitting there talking and my phone rings and it's Eric. He says, Hey, what's going on? I said, We just killed one. Need any help? As yeah. a matter of fact, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. And Eric and I have cut up and packed out a few. He's he's excellent at cutting, and I'm excellent at walking. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that was yeah. fun. But yeah. anyway, we're on to deer now. No more moose. Yep. No more moose. Right. Anyone been thinking about deer lately? Mm. Yeah. All I the act- time. I actually. <laughs> <laughs> Rick never stopped. Huh? Yeah. Well, Three sixty-five. I actually took a little walk, put a couple trail cameras out. Really? Yep. Yesterday, yeah. Nice. Well, a day before yesterday, I guess it was. Look at you modernizing and everything, putting yeah. trail cams up. Yeah. Well, I don't put a lot of them out, but just fun. I don't. I don't rely on them for anything. Right. I just want to see what's around. But I thought it was pretty good. It was. Um, I was about an hour and a half in the woods, and I found three signposts. I knew, and it was in an area I knew anyway. And then, but I found I don't know four or five more regular rubs and five or six scrapes it was pretty good for you know an hour and a half in the woods yeah that means they're starting to move around a little bit yeah yeah i i actually went for a walk yesterday about two hours and found half a dozen scrapes mm-hmm. yeah yeah joe sent me a picture yesterday of a a skitter rub on a tree there yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> that was a skitter rub all right yeah, but the yeah. dirt all moved behind it too, which is kind of cool. It was a, a rub, and then there was a scrape right out behind it. Yeah, yeah, close by. So, but uh, well, that's kind of that was one of the things that we wanted to touch on a little bit today. So, opening day. <coughs> so this is airing at the uh, the eleventh is is when this is out. So we've got a week behind us now of hunting season. Yeah. But we're sitting here on on two days before opening hunting season, day, getting yeah. ready to start here. So there's no snow in the immediate forecast later on next week it looks like we might get some friday is what what i'm looking at but that changes daily anyway yeah you never know up here no especially no. up here right yeah yeah, um, yeah. but uh 
without snow, we always talk about tracking, but we wanted to touch a little bit on, you know, how to hunt up here in the big woods. What Without snow. Without snow. <laughs> Lee says, go to work. <laughs> go to work. Wait for snow. <laughs> yeah. I can't shoot one till the snow because Jason's coming up to film me with trying to make a production like Lee's last year and hopefully get a kill shot. We'll see. So I'm just scouting till the snow. Yeah. yeah. Your film better be good because, well, everyone's seen it by now. But Yeah, everybody's seen it by now. <coughs> this has got more build up than mm. like. Uh, well, I like, hope it doesn't disappoint or I'm just going to put my hoodie on and <laughs> you know, all today. Run. Well, it's, maybe it's pretty good. <laughs> I wouldn't say everybody's seen it because, you know, it's posted on Facebook, but. YouTube. Yeah. 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 So, so it, it is going to be on YouTube and uh, it's easy to, to find. Just uh, go on YouTube. Go to the Big Woods Bucks channel, um, subscribe, first of all, and then uh, there's a little bell on there. If you if you ring that bell or click on the bell, then it gives you notifications when we do repost anything else, which we're, we're going to be working hard this hunting season to have a lot of content on yeah. YouTube. Um, yeah. I think people need to know, too, that uh, uh, the more they like and the more they share that stuff, the more our sponsors are, are likely to help us out get more footage footage and because none of us are just rich other than joe but <laughs> just, you know. joe shaking his head yeah. <laughs> but uh you know we're just working stiffs but you have to deal some with of these, this all the time yeah, joe. yeah, all yeah. The time. i don't work <laughs> we have some i'm new- gonna jet off to my island <laughs> yeah. after this podcast <laughs> yeah we have some. We're new- taking Rick's jet. Yeah. What's that? The island out yeah. here? Yeah. Hey, <laughs> and here we are talking. Who was the last one to go on a private jet? Not me. Oh uh, yeah, Hal and 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 Lee's best friend Joe Donito, who, yeah. who won't even who won't even let Lee on to his property down there. No. no. That's another uh, subject, though. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this, that's going to be my next film: the search for Joe Donito. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but anyways back to the sponsors we've got some good ones coming on uh and they just need to see that you guys and gals want to watch us that's all they need to give us a little bit of coin to go do our thing so yeah. help us out if you want if you don't hmm. what i'd add to that is is we we've already and i've always said this we're not going to take on sponsors unless we you know believe in their products or whatever we're not going to hawk everything that comes down the pike you know it's going to be things that useful to us in the big woods and yeah things uh, that make sense yeah things that make sense to us that we'll uh pass along to you and which along those lines i've had the i've had my uh yokohamas on for a couple weeks now and i did a trip down to new york and they are i've had a lot of off-road tires yeah, and these these are these are aggressive tread the ones i've got i've got the mts 35 is mine yeah yep 35 12 50s and that is an awesome highway tire yeah nice. it, it just i mean they ride really well and the noise is is minimal yeah not yeah i all, told so. you that when i got mine i went new york right off and the same thing i'm like i couldn't believe them things weren't howling down the road they yep. look like they'll howl but they don't they don't no, no. San- no. my buddy sandy there's got a set he put on his last truck the nissan fifty thousand, and they still look pretty good nice no kidding. yeah wow yeah i, I mean that's the... that's a lot of miles yeah, yeah. That's how is sandy miles. doing he's a he's another big buck killer that he, would be good on here yeah he just retired <laughs> good for him yes you better look out now oh yeah <laughs> the, the animals better look out that's now. right yeah yeah nice but so uh we were kind of laughing we were uh rick started telling a few stories and i said save them save them yeah. i want to talk about them because <laughs> You know, any guy that's been hunting up here for a long time and has all the experience always has stories. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, but uh, going back, we'll get to that. Uh, so, Hal, what's your, in a situation like this, and what are you looking for, and, and how are you hunting the big woods when there's, when there's no snow on the ground? I can't sit still for more than 10 minutes, so I just walk around. And I cover... I cover the ground according to the sign is what I do. If, you know, you get into places here where you don't hardly see any tracks or any sign, you got to get through those places. You can't take, a lot of people think still hunting is like you take a step to and look no. around. 
you can't do that. You gotta you gotta move until you get into the sign. So I'll move through an area, and uh, I always try to find. You know, I either go high or low because without snow, it's maybe it's a little warmer or something. But them bucks like to be up in where it's cooler, up on the tops where it's green growth, or down in the bottoms where it's cedar bogs or swamps, and uh, especially down in the bottom is where you're gonna most likely find those signpost rubs and stuff. So I just look for that. I kind of, I call it sl- still hunting slash scouting. I'm really scouting. And uh, when I find some good sign, I, I slow right up and start trying to figure it out, how the bucks are coming into it, how they're going out of it. You know, if I find a signpost, I take a picture of it, of course, and then and then uh, then if I can figure out where it looks like, you know, a buck is going or several of them, I'll kind of follow that direction you know sometimes if it's wet leaves you can follow the tracks a ways but if not you just you can almost tell where them bucks are going if you think like them right it's yeah just, you just kind of get an idea where you must be going out through here and and uh sometimes you can follow it long enough that direction and you might get into the next place that looks good you know you might come to another spot you're getting into some more sign and slow down again and figure it out and then once you're all done with that i always call it you're kind of connecting the dots in the woods, you know. You get all these little places in a piece of woods that with yeah, a buck it's, sign. Yeah, it's all going to add up, you know, it, later in the season. All these spots that you find are going to add up, and you, like Hal said, you're going to connect the dots, and you're probably going to go back and kill that deer. Yeah, you'll find. Yeah. I always, I like finding the signpost because, especially even in a new area, because that's, that's where I go to look to pick up a track. I'll head right in, and I go, if I go check two or three, four signposts, I'm going to find a buck track on any given day. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. So I, The thing you said about, which I like this time of year, because if you don't have snow, it, and especially if it's cold out, it's going to be loud. And uh, Which, by the, by the way, the end of next week is looking cold. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, yeah. nice, at night. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, um, I like the the – the spruce and cedar bogs and stuff because that's tends to be quieter to walk in and yep. slipping around is, is why I like it most is it anything up in the, to me, anything where you got to go through the leaves a lot or right. It's just noisy walking. And I, and I'm unlike how I can stand and sit for a while. If I get into a spot that's nice, I'll sit down for an hour and you know, it's the right time of day or whatever. And, and, uh, I just, I don't, I don't mind taking the time to sit and especially if it's noisy. It's, yeah. um, well, it's a good technique, you know, it's, sit around, do a little call, and maybe grunt a little bit or bleed a little bit, you know. Yeah, that's what I'll usually do. I get into a spot with some sign, and if, if the wind's right, because I'm like you, I can't sit very long, but I'll grunt two or three times, just sit and wait. You ever seen rattling work up here? I've, I've killed probably two or three rattling, yeah. I killed a buck one day, and I was in along this brook, and I won't say where. <laughs> <laughs> He's learning. I've already been in trouble this morning for saying something. <laughs> First thing when he walked into class, he got saying, scolded. Yeah, saying something. You didn't yeah. say something. You read it. You, you, know, read it. Yeah, you yeah. wrote it in a book. National magazine. <laughs> in a national magazine. That's yeah. actually funny because that spot's wore out anyway. So. <laughs> yeah, I know. We killed them all. Yeah. But uh, I was hunting along this brook, and I come into some pretty good buck sign. There was three scrapes right in a row, and. He was flinging stuff about 25 feet. I said, boy, he had a good foot on him. I said, that's a pretty good deer. And I just come up to this little knoll, and it just felt right. It just looked good. And I leaned up against a, there was a big maple there. I leaned up against that maple, pulled my grunt out. I grunted three times. Stood there for, I don't know, eight, ten minutes, nothing. And I said, man, I know he's here. And uh, it just everything was fresh. And there was a kind of a dead spruce behind me. I had no rattling horns or anything, so I just reached over and I broke off four or five limbs and grabbed one on the ground and I just raked it against that tree a little bit like you would a moose or anything. I grunted again. Within three minutes, he come walking right in. His hair was standing up on his neck. Yeah. I mean, he was ready to fight. Right. Yeah, and I shot him. He, he weighed 221. He nice. nice. Yeah, he was a nice deer. But that, like I said, it's all the situation. Everything has to just. Yeah. And gotta, I mean, how many people, would, how many people just, would have broke branches off to use as their. 
Well, you know, that's just improvising. Right, because the, grunt, the grunting didn't work, and I said, man, I wish I had a set of ant, you know, antlers right now. What's the next best resort? Yeah. 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 So. You shot one just, I think, I don't know. It was probably three years ago now, but you shot one on bare ground, um, which yeah, was a nice buck. It was a 10-pointer, I think. 11. Yeah. yeah. He had one brow tine that stuck right out straight. That was, yeah, there like was, a I, you didn't have any snow on that one, did you? No, no snow. No, no. Drove into a spot that I usually hunted, and they had clear cut the whole place. And I just dropped my head. I said, oh, man, they ruined this spot. So we went back and we went in. I had my buddy Tim Williams with me. You know Tim. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's as tall and skinny as hell. Yeah. Yeah, he can get around <laughs> through the woods like a ghost. And uh, so we drove around for a while, didn't really find any sign bare ground we were looking in the you know in the places they crossed in the road never saw a fresh track so i said well let's go back then and, and it was a stream went down through there no names this time either yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was so, unknown stream right <laughs> that was it so uh we got out and i said you want to take the high side or the low side and he says i'll take the low side i was all right so we left and i was kind of working my way down through that cot that big cut and he had dropped down to the stream and I looked up ahead, and I just see a couple tails go. Really couldn't tell what they were. And uh, when, I don't know, probably 30, 40 more feet, and I see a big buck track right in the mud. I said, geez, I said, maybe that was him. It was a pretty fresh track. So just quick thinking, I, the highway was probably, oh, 100 yards from where I was. And uh, so I run out. To, and I'll tell you where it was over in Eustis. All right. So it wasn't yeah, really send them all over there. Yeah, yeah. What, yeah. Wasn't really a highway, but so I I ran out to the road, ran down the road because there was a bog ahead of me, and I knew I'd have a hard time getting through it. So I ran down the road about three four hundred yards, and just on the other side of it was this little cabin, little camp. Well, these guys were in there. It was just you know probably half an hour after daylight by then. These guys were in there. You could see them sitting at the table drinking coffee. <laughs> they, they hadn't even got out the door yet i never heard this part of the story this is good yeah so i snuck down by their camp they never saw me snuck out back in that brook kind of fed across the road into that and that's what created that bog it was a big bog so i now i was on the other side of that bog i dropped down in there and there was just a little bit of a ridge that kind of came up and of course tim was down probably a quarter of a mile from me by then down towards the stream working his way, and we figured either one of us would jump something that might loop around back to the other guy, kind of still hunting through there. And I just got to that knoll, and this doe come from my right, which I'm pretty sure it's the one that I jumped back in that cot. she just worked her way through the bog, and she was coming up through. So I just stopped and stood there and let her go by. She stopped and looked at me. I waited four or five minutes, and pretty soon here come that buck. Had his nose right on the ground right behind her and just goes to show you you know just quick thinking yeah something yeah. something might work yeah. you know yeah. and yeah. say well that, that, might that was work. a hell of a nice buck too it was a good deer yeah. what that one way 216 yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah nice rack on it yeah that was early in the season wasn't it it was that was right yeah. and i almost i almost let him go yeah because <laughs> of course you did yeah i almost Jesus. let him go because i but then I, I stood there, and he was coming, and I said, well, I'm, I'm going to Saskatchewan next week. Yeah. <laughs> the week after that, I'm going to Missouri, and right. I said, I probably ought to shoot him. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to hide in your luggage. It would be a big bag, but I could get in there. Yeah. So we never, we never did meet up with the guys that were drinking coffee in the yeah, camp. Yeah, yeah. I was going to no. ask you what happened with that. No. I thought you were going to say you drug it out through their backyard. <laughs> no, we went around. We didn't want to We didn't want Disturb to cause, them. Right. <laughs> See, a lot of times people people ask me all the time, you know, they're trying to explain their situation in the woods, you know, they'll say, Hey, this I had I was following this buck or I had this buck do this or that or whatever and they say, What would you do? And I always say, I don't know because I wasn't there, right? Yeah, exactly. Every situation's different. You yeah, gotta assess the terrain, yeah. the woods, the what, wind, the wind just the, you, Oh yeah. 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 And then you have to do something. Like we said, you just gotta pick something and do it. Yeah. yeah, I call it a fork in the road. You pick one fork and go, and yeah. then because you're going to come to another one anyway, and eventually it works. Something happens, but yeah. if you don't do anything, you're Nothing's never going to get work. Yeah, no. you I was going to say that's the most important part is to be there. Be there because yeah. 
a lot of times people are waiting for the perfect day in the right conditions. Yeah. And oh, yeah. Sometimes you have to. I mean, sometimes you got limited time that you can go, and, and that's what you got to do. Right. Got to be in yeah. the woods. Be- I, I will say one thing about hunting this time of year is always, always hunt into the wind. You don't have that choice when you're tracking because you, the track takes you to he, lots of times those big bucks like to walk with the wind to their back. And, uh, but this time of year, you want every advantage with no snow on the ground. And, you know, always, so whatever piece of wood you go into, always assess it from the right end. Yeah. 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 Because God knows how many deer you're blowing out of there. If oh. If you got yeah. the wind at your back or. I yeah. usually, any of them, usually you walk, it's usually a west wind here or northwest or something. Right. And try to go in on the east side if you can, you know. I don't know. Lately, there's been a lot of south. Yeah. <laughs> All this rain and stuff moving in. Been a lot of that over we, Moose season. We need a northeast wind. Yeah. From what I understand, it's coming tomorrow night, 50, 60 mile an hour up here. Yeah, it's going to drop. Sand. It's going to drop right down. It said 27. Yeah. 20, right 25 I saw over in tomorrow Eustace. Night. Yeah. yeah, tomorrow yes. night. So the leaves will be crunchy Saturday morning. Yeah. yeah. The wet leaves will be froze. Yep. Yeah. Probably find you on one of those big Texas box blinds. Yeah, that's yeah. What I was about. <laughs> yeah, overlooking a big cut. <laughs> <laughs> My food plot. Yeah. Oh, uh, I did that one morning on crunchy leaves. Did I ever tell you that big ten that I had the model seven hundred Remington bolt action? I don't and think the I night heard before, it. I was sitting there at the table and I said, oh, "I'm going to clean that gun." So I pulled the gun apart and I dumped some oil down that firing pin. Thinking I was doing oh, a man. great thing, you know. <laughs> yeah, so yeah that, we've done that before. Next morning, I go over. This was in Baldwin. Uh, went over to a dirt road. Was pulling up in that dirt road, and I see a big buck track frozen. But you could tell it was made the day before because it was in the 40s or 50s, and then dropped right down. But you couldn't walk through the woods. It was so noisy. There was a little brook there, Breakneck Brook, the upper end of it, and. Uh, that buck you could see was going down in along that brook, and I knew there was a big open hardwood area down there, and then a new chopping, and it went down through the edge of this field, had a couple stone walls around, just beautiful southern Maine deer country. I jumped right in that brook, and I started working my way down through that brook, and I looked up after about a quarter of a mile, and that 10 point is trying to get on the back of a doe. And I'm oh, like, son of geez. a gun. Yeah. So I pulled that gun up, and I could not get that firing pin to hit that that primer hard enough to go off and i ended up with that gun stuck under my armpit breathing on it and obviously i was making some commotion because he got same his, thing you do with the women isn't it yeah yeah stick yeah. them under your armpit yeah. breathe on them warm them up <laughs> <laughs> and uh i couldn't get it to go off needless to say he walked off and uh, <laughs> And uh, that was it. It's hard to concentrate, Lee, when he keeps making those comments. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <that's>, uh, <laughs> no. <clears throat> you should see me driving. He gets talking. I go right off the road. <laughs> like two kids in the car. Yeah. 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 I, never got a, I never got a word in edgewise. You were just nonstop. <laughs> yeah. I can't believe that. Uh, yeah, I learned, a lo- I learned a lot about Lee. <laughs> I listened to a podcast there <laughs> the other night, and Christ, I didn't think I said enough. I said, I got to start talking. Yeah. <laughs> Joe talks all the time. All right, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are giving me a complex. Oh. Uh. Hey, folks. Hal here. Hey, I uh, want to talk about uh, the biggest challenge people have in the woods, especially the big woods trying to hunt, is navigation. It's the number one, and it's the key to be able to hunt successfully in the big woods and uh a compass of course you got to have a compass but maps to go along with your compass is really going to be a key you know they're going to show you a lot of things like your terrain features and all that and also the the old trails logging roads etc and uh i think the way to get these is with uh with onyx they've got a great mapping software and you can you can download it into your phone as an app, or you can get an SD chip to put into your GPS. They fit most any modern GPS, and uh, that'll cover. You can get them. You can get a chip for any state, or you can uh, when you download the app. What you can do is is download you know topographical, but also satellite imagery. And that's the one I use the most because the satellite imagery tells me. I can see what kind of trees, if it's softwood trees, 
hardwood trees, and, uh, you know, you can also see uh, logging, different types of cuts. You know, it might be a clear cut or, or whatever. Very, very helpful for hunting, whether it's deer, moose, or anything you're hunting. But um, what I like about it is when you're hunting in remote areas, you don't have cell service. So you're, you're basically offline. But if you download ahead of time a certain area, the area you're going to hunt, download it into your phone, and uh, you can bring it up and it'll show you right where you are and you can kind of keep track of your positions and all of that. Anyways, excited to tell you about a partnership we formed with with Onyx. So uh, go to onyx.com and we get you a 20% discount. You punch in the promo code BWB and you're going to get 20% off on your Onyx. All right, get down there and get those apps downloaded and get your chips for your GPS and Get ready to hunt. Hey, guys. Joe here. Wanted to take a few minutes to talk about Lake Parlin Lodge. We're a uh, four-season lodge located just south of Jackman. We've got cabins, lodge rooms, mini lodge. We're a big snowmobile destination in the winter, full restaurant, bar, all the amenities that you need for your trip. Open all, obviously, through the summer right on the lake. Kayaks, canoes, all included with the cabin. We also do a lot of weddings, so if you're looking for a destination wedding, we can do a wedding up to 200 people. And, uh, of course... We've got our hunting season, moose season, deer season. So check us out. We're at lakeparlinlodge.com. Hey, Hal here. Just want to take a minute to talk about the hunting club. And uh, you can join by going right online at uh, bigwoodsbucks.com. But anyways, I've got uh, all my information is going in there. And it's a place where you can get together and and uh, look at my films, tips, writings, and all of that. And the best part is 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 there's forums for you to communicate with, you know, the rest of the club members, talk about Big Wood stuff and all of that. So, anyways, 36 bucks a year, cheaper than getting a Starbucks once a day. So, join up and hope you see you're on there. Hey. Uh, well, maybe I won't hunt Saturday what? then if it's going <laughs> to so? be noisy. Yeah, I'll get in the brook and walk. You, you were telling Hal a story. I was, Chris had my ear there on the phone, but you were telling some deer story when... When I was on the phone, and I heard some chuckles and stuff. You think I should tell that one? Yeah, the one when you was a kid? Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. You do? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, this this was down. This is a lesson about what yeah. not, what kind of hunter not to be. Yeah, it is. It, yeah, exactly. Well, they ain't real hunters anyways, but. No. Well, I, so this was back, I don't know, in the, probably in the 80s, early 80s, I guess. I mean, might have been. Yeah, about 80, 1981, too, and I was 16. We got up that morning, it snowed about a foot. And uh, so Dad and I headed over to the camp. This is probably the middle of November. And we went over into the camp that morning. And where, dry- where was camp then? Down in on Martin Stream. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That, down around home. And b- back then, there was 10 times the deer there is now. We never had any coyotes, you know, and just deer everywhere. So we driving down into camp. We never saw anybody in there. We driving down in that morning, and we're going by the bog, and there's this great big guy standing there with a wool, red wool jacket on with orange hat, and he had it's snowing like hell, and he's got those yellow shooting glasses on. I, now I'm thinking, <laughs> 16, boy, that's kind of odd. <laughs> and uh, Dad just looked at me, and he says, what the heck's he doing? So we... We went up into the base of the mountain there, which was Green Mountain, and uh, excellent hunting back in those days. And we had uh, we had uh, John Susie, my buddy John, his father Ken. They had come over because we all hunted together all the time. And Ken thought the world of me and John. He just we couldn't do no wrong back then. You know, everything we did was just perfect. So anyway, we decided, we split up. We got out and split up. And I said, "Well, I'm going to head up top of the mountain." And uh, I wasn't really into tracking all that much then. I was just learning how to track. You know, if I come onto a buck track, I'd take it. And uh, so I, I headed up top of the mountain. I get up there, and we call it a notch. It's like a little notch between two mountains right there, and the deer always kind of cross through there. I get up there, and I sat down. I was pretty tired from walking up top. And we had like a foot of snow. I sat down, and I sat there probably like 10 minutes, and I see this doe off to my left. She's coming up through the hardwoods, going along, and 
she wasn't really running, just kind of trotting along. And so I stood up, got ready, and this buck come, this eight pointer come right up behind her. And I fired at him. He was probably off 100 yards or so, 150, and fired at him two or three times. Open sights back then. And so I worked my way over there, and I see a pretty good blood trail. I said, hey, I got him, you know, all right. So kept on his track. I followed him, followed him, and, I mean, he was bleeding like crazy. I said, man, he's not going to last long. Like, finally got down and went back down over the mountain, down into the bog, down in towards Martin Stream. And uh, there he was standing there in the thicket. He, he was running out of blood, getting pretty wobbly, and I fired at him, finished him off. So I went over to him, and I was looking him over and started to gut him out. And then I'm thinking, geez, I said, I wonder where Dad is. He must have heard me shoot. So, because he usually wasn't very far away. We had walked up the mountain together and then split. So I hollered at him. Back then, we had no radios. They weren't even thought of back then. No cell phones or anything. Didn't hear from him, so I waited 15, 20 minutes and hollered again, nothing. So I ended up climbing this spruce tree probably 50 feet tall, and I got up the top of that spruce, so I was up out of the bog, and I hollered, and he answered, he hollered back at me. I said, oh, here he comes. So I climbed back down, and I finished dressing the deer out, waiting for him to show up, and the, I look up, and these two guys in green army drabs, yeah. yeah, yeah, all green, orange vests on, they both had them old, old uh, bolt-action military rifles, and one of them had a bayonet on the end of it. <laughs> this is a true story. <laughs> so the guy looks at me and he says, that's our colonel's deer. I said, you know, I'm 16 years. I says, no, I'm pretty proud of it. Pretty not, Biggest buck I think I'd ever killed. And I said, uh, no, that's my deer. I, I shot that deer. And he takes that bayonet and he poked me right in the chest with Come it. Come on. Honest to God. <laughs> I mean, listen to the rest of the story, so. <laughs> he pokes me in the chest. Well, it scared the hell out of me. I just backed right up right there, and I don't think I ever been that scared again in my life, really. And I just backed right up, and I said, fine. And I left. I just started walking out. So uh, I run into my father. He About halfway down, he had found my tracks of the blood trail, told him the story. Ken, Ken was with him, John's dad. I told him the story, and both their faces just turned beet red and they looked at me and they said, you go get the truck. We're going to go get your deer. So then they left. Well, I didn't go very far and I run into John. I told John what happened, the whole story. And John and I are headed to get the truck and we hear two shots. John looks at me and he says, oh, this ain't good. He says, I think they might have shot both of them guys. <laughs> <laughs> they, they were That's mad. That's what you would think, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so... Well, I'm thinking the worst, you know, like, oh, man, what's going to happen? What, oh, th- uh, we didn't know if those guys shot it. Yeah. Our two dads Absolutely. or whatever. So we, get, we go down, get the scout. We make it up as far as we can up the mountain, and we park it, and we start hiking back up, and here comes Ken and Dad dragging my buck. So we get up to them, and they, and they say, what happened? What happened? Ken says, well, he says, we got down there the way you gutted that deer, and he said, we see where they were dragging it right up. Had it, so we started following their tracks, and he says, we went two, 300 yards, and he says, they were halfway up the ridge, and he says, I fired two shots right over their head. He says, that's a warning shot, and he says, if I ever catch you guys trying to steal a kid's deer again, he says, you're going to be more to pay. Yeah. And uh, he said, they dropped the buck and run. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> nice. Well, so we, we loaded the deer, and we head it back down, and we get down to the the main tote road there because we're up on like a skidder trail with the scout we get down the main tote road and we turn the corner and here's that colonel guy standing there mr yellow glasses yep yeah that was him and he filled his jacket up pretty full yeah so he's standing there and we pull up beside him and he st- he stopped us he puts his finger out to stop so dad rolls the window down he says that's my idea right there well, I'll tell you right now, my father stepped out of that truck, grabbed him by the sh- collar. And Rick's dad is not some small guy. He's <laughs> no. a pretty rugged guy. He's rugged yeah. now in his 70s. I can imagine yeah. what he was yeah. like then. And, and, and Ken got out the other side. They grabbed that guy by the collar and shook him. And he says, if you ever come back in here again or ever 
try to steal a kid's deer again. He says, you won't live to tell about it. And, and we never saw him again. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean. <laughs> so, what, so what was the deal there? Was this guy really a colonel? Were, were those his minions? I mean. I think, well, we asked him where they were from, where he was from, and he said Mount Vernon. So, but that was the last time we ever saw him. The yeah. Colonel from Mount Vernon. The Colonel. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's going to be the next film. It won't have as much fanfare as Lee's film, though. But I, that's a good storyline, right yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. 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 Could I, make a movie. We, out I of that. could work with that. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty funny. Uh, I have more, Lee. Do it. Oh, yeah. I yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey. yeah. Oof. That's that's something though. It, it it just is incredible how someone can. And you hear stories all the time. People that that. Yeah, they try just, to claim another deer. They just or, wanted to steal that deer from me, and and. Uh, so they could take it home and claim so, they yeah. shot it. I get, yeah. yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. That was like uh, what, what my neighbor, up? my neighbor uh, Jack. There, that he's not there anymore. He's yeah, I remember he's in Jack. his eighties. Yeah, so yeah. so he used to uh, he lived in Bingham in the fifties, and he would he would shoot deer for room and board, um, and he was shooting them for hunters that would come up and didn't care about killing a deer. Yeah, so I they can't were imagine deer that. Deer for huh? people, yeah, and you hear yeah, about yeah. that stuff that happened all the time. You used to, yeah. That was kind of back in the old days. That was almost like part of a guide's job was to get deer for the clients. You know, back then it was the deer were thick up north, and yeah, we don't, know, we're not doing that next week. <laughs> <laughs> no, that well, was the only reason I signed on. I thought oh, I could geez. hunt the whole month. <laughs> oh, you'll hunt all right. <laughs> <laughs> I know the old timers used to tell me. Oh, I mean, remember old Amy LaCour. You guys, do you ever meet Amy LaCour? I never did. No, geez, he was a nice old guy there. He was born like the turn of the century and lived back. He was born in Lowell Town back when the mill was in there and stuff. And, and uh, he was a tough old guy, a little, little short French guy there. But he used to always tell me, thank God for the beaver, you know. He said we didn't ever made it because there weren't many beaver and they were worth a lot of money, you know. He said one winter he trapped like, 13 beaver that's what he trapped all winter and but it was like a fortune they were like 60 dollars wow. a piece or something huh. back then but anyway yeah. he told me guiding he said you know guiding the hunters um i think he said back then the and this might it was probably by the like in the 30s and 40s the guys working in the woods made like a a buck and a half a day and uh then uh guys some guys made two bucks doing something, and the railroad workers made three bucks a day, but guides made four bucks a day, so it was the highest paying job was being a guide. And he said, and if you kill the, if you kill the nice buck for the clients, it would be worth 10 to $15. Wow. And that's what they did, you know. They yeah. made sure they killed deer for all the sports because it was a lot of money for them in a week. You know, they got their wages yeah. plus quite a bit more, you know. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And back then it was buck or dough, right? Yeah. They were killing everything. Yeah. Yeah. I told you that before. Carol Huey told me, he said, if they'd shot a buck that had good size antlers on, he used to knock them off with the ax so they'd be easy to drag out. <laughs> you know, their own deer, not for the yeah. sports. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. He said, you used to just take the ax and knock the horns off and tie a rope around their neck, and drag them out. <laughs> Imagine. I thought uh -huh. that's what horns were made for. Yeah. <laughs> really. Yeah. Yeah. Different time. They were just meat was what they were after. Yeah. Yeah. Which is <clears throat> pretty darn good. I I was cutting up some, putting some, getting some backstrap, cleaning it, and get all the silver skin off and, uh, the other night. And that is, there's no better looking piece of meat than that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No. I That's wanted to cook silver. it all right then, but it was a little bit too much for me to eat in one sitting. <laughs> <laughs> I might have some next week. Yeah. yeah. Lee, you can eat a whole deer in about a month, can't you? I've never had one go past my birthday, and that's April 1st, so yeah. I can do it in last, but it's the, per <laughs> the person that lives in the house with me usually can't, can't do it every day. Yeah, can't tolerate it every yeah. day. Yeah. I've been yeah. eating elk meat about every third meal lately. Yeah, you can send yeah. some over if you want. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the yeah. big jet setter, the the the, uh, the jet setter. <laughs> yeah, Rick and Hal, they're they're flying out west hunting elk. By the working stiffs, Lee and Joe are back here. <laughs> Why do we do it? Uh huh. So we can sit around and talk to them hey, and oh, hear about their stories. I've invited you for a long time. I know. I know. <laughs> I actually, I told Hal before you came. He said, he said, I got another elk head here for the lodge, and I said, you know, 
I'm going out there soon. I got to do that. <laughs> you better. You've been asking me forever. So yeah, yeah. you better. Yeah. I'm going to do that here in the next few years. What I tell all you young guys is, is don't keep waiting around for it. The right yeah. time to go. Just go now. do it. Go do it now. Yeah. 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 Well, you won't be able to later on. All of a sudden you'll say, geez, I would have wished I'd have done that, you know? Well, you know, that is the challenge though, of when now when your work crosses over and your work is hunting, you know, with moose seasons and stuff. Yeah, it right. gets in yeah. the way. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. You just get so busy. Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. But. Yeah, even That's, when I had my other place, though, I, I always wanted to go doll sheep hunting, and I, I carved out a piece of time I could go in between the, you know, in between the moose season and, you know, it was in between bear and moose, I guess, or something, and just went, you know, and did it, you know. Yeah, Woody tells me that uh, you guys are going next year or the year after. He wants to go in 21, yeah. Yeah. Where are you going? I don't know yet. I don't know. Yeah, he was, he's mentioned Alaska, but we'll see. Have, have you done yeah. a doll sheep yet? No. I'm no, surprised I, of that. I know, I know. I got a guy in Alaska that's pretty good at it. Yeah. Yeah. I would I would have thought you'd been all over that, but it's probably hard to fit into your hunting schedule. It is. Yeah. <laughs> I got to <laughs> work. I got to work a little bit. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> a little, right? Pay for the trips. Yeah. Well, look, yeah. the thing about the sheep hunt, one thing about it is you can you can go early, you know. It's uh, yeah, actually, it's usually, yeah, it's August. August yeah. August, actually, yeah. I went before bear. I was thinking it was between moose and bear but it wasn't it was before it was during the bait season i had the guys that could take care of all that and then uh i went on the first hunt which was they, in alaska there's like two 10-day hunts it's the it's the 10th i think it's the 10th to the 20th and then it stops for a, a week and then there's another one 10 days after that or something yeah yep. yeah you shot a pretty nice elk this year didn't you yeah good bull yeah 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 not as big as hal's but well yours was a was, good one Yours was like a mountain bull more, you know, a timber bull, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's pretty yeah. rugged terrain out there in Wyoming. Yeah. yeah. Now, do you have a place out in Wyoming? I do. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Don't yeah. invite Lee. Yeah. No? <laughs> no. No one likes him to come. <laughs> <laughs> Lee'd like go snowmobiling with you. I, I think he's, he's mm. already invited. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he'd probably be more inclined you're to come the in the first. winter. You're the first. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Joe Donito made it clear that I wasn't welcome in the Adirondacks. <laughs> We're going to go gotta down there and show him. I got to find out the bottom of this story. Uh, yeah, the <laughs> oh, there's going to be. Oh, we're still. We're just building the storyline now. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I want to tap old Joe on the shoulder yeah. one day and say, would you mind I, stepping I never aside? met Joe. <laughs> <laughs> I never met him, but he friended me on yeah, Facebook. Yeah, he's a nice yeah. guy. I yeah. Like oh, yeah. 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 He's a big buck killer, too. Yeah. 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 Oh, he's fun to hang out with, too. Yeah. He gets into we, it like the rest of us. We wouldn't know. <laughs> <laughs> you got to be part of the exclusive uh, club to go down there with Joe DeVito, like, huh, huh Lee? It, yeah, it's like that... Pre- uh, that pretend friend that Hal has. What's his name? Steve. You ever met him? No, he's his imaginary <laughs> friend. Imaginary friend. <laughs> yeah, he was. He's like that. The girl, you know, in middle school. Oh, you got a girlfriend? Yeah, but she lives far away. Uh, <laughs> she's where I used to live. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh we don't do this because it's fun. <laughs> no, nope. I think you've met work. Steve Lee. I know I have. I'm just saying. <laughs> now look at him getting all defensive. Yeah, <laughs> he really does exist. Yeah. We made out before. <laughs> oh, I remember the first time I ever met Steve. You wouldn't know. He was just a nice guy, you know, just a regular oh, yeah. client. Nobody ever told me anything. Yeah, good guy. yeah. You walked. How many miles did you walk that night when the Ram Charger broke down? 18 <laughs> after we'd hunted in ontario yeah. that's a good day's hunt <laughs> yeah. no no that was after after the ram tried oh but that 18 miles is a good day oh yeah, yeah. Know, all day <laughs> it yeah. was the last day of the trip we'd been out there Holy. like 10 days yeah. and i had shot a buck and uh kevin was with us and kevin had shot a buck he came with me to drive and uh <clears throat> the conditions were terrible too it, it ended up being like uh Real cold. It gets cold there early. You know that out west there. And it was oh, cold, yeah. below zero all the time, and the snow was crunchy. You know, it was just in very little of it. You know, it was like barely an inch of snow. Yeah. And it was really bad conditions. But yes. anyways, yeah. couldn't get one for Steve there. And, and uh, we were coming out the last night, and Kev called on the radio. He said, I got the Ram Charger all warmed up. We're like, good, you know. So 
we had we when we get out of the woods we had about a mile across this huge clear cut to walk out and we get out there and jumped in the ram charger and i jumped in the driver's seat and i go about a half a mile and it went poop the end of it i mean it shut off like you shut the key off i turned around i look at kev i go that didn't sound very good but i carry all the electrical parts with me in the console and i get out and i checked a few things changed a couple of things the ballast resistor and the the starter relay changed a couple things and then i said i better check for fire and i had i had a fire to the coil but none to the plugs and i go we ain't going nowhere bad coil no i had a coil but it was i knew it wasn't that though so i anyway i told him it was getting late and i said well maybe we can catch a get a ride on a log truck you know on the way out because they were they'd been logging out on the main road which was we had uh five kilometers to walk to get out off this side road to get to the main logging road and uh we walked out there and kev had gone ahead of us i was still trying a couple things and he goes i'm getting out to the road and he had a little fire going no trucks had been by so we start walking and we we were counting the kilometers off you know it was all mark well from where from there it was 24 kilometers and was 29 (laughs) we'd walk but yeah we walked that whole road that night and there was a truck at the rear liner out at the end of the road. Thank God. He said he was the last truck. He had come out like a mile before they were cutting on a side road. He said, yeah, I'm the last truck out tonight. Ooh, that was a long trip after hunting all day and stuff. I, I think we told that story before anyways on here. but Yeah, well, got to cover it again. You know, not everyone's yeah. heard it. Yeah. So we were, what was that other story we were, you were talking about before? Um, oh, the one where where you were by a lake and yeah, are we naming that lake? No, no. 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 <laughs> <laughs> it was right. Parlin. It was uh, par- it was Parlin. Parlin. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was all right. We'll call it Parlin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, this was back uh, 2011. I killed this buck, and uh, oh gee, I thought it was I thought it was long ago. That's pretty yeah. recent. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. I think it was 2011. I'm pretty sure. No, actually, you, I'm 10 years. It's 2001, because I just looked at the picture the other night, and it was dated on the back. Yeah. So yeah. 2001, and uh, so yeah, quite a while ago. But I had this buck. I was, and it wasn't really that far from the lodge here. But I had this buck. I'd been chasing him for two or three days. He had a heck of a track on him. I mean, he was big deer, and. Uh, it was the last week of rifle season, and we had probably five, six inches of snow, perfect conditions. And uh, you get a little bit of snow every single night. I picked his track up, and Dad had been hunting with me quite a bit back then. He used to hunt with me almost every day. And uh, picked his track up finally that morning, and, and he headed right back into the mountains. I mean, I mean, just straight in. He'd be out there crossing the roads at night look, searching for does and... And, uh, of course, you know, the end of the season, they're looking for the last doe that's, that's right. in heat. Those big ones always do that. Yeah. Travel. Travel. And so he took me back in, and, and it's back in by the lake there. It's all these little roly-poly, just straight up and down ridges and mountains and ledges and just rough terrain. And I tracked him probably two miles that morning before I jumped him. He'd laid up on this little knob. I, when I jumped him up... I should have had a shot at him. I could see his hindquarter, and, and he had before that he had come in with the doe, so I wasn't sure if it was the doe, and uh, it actually was him, and he was kind of behind the blowdown. Well, he just stepped ahead, and when he did, I couldn't see him anymore, and then I got up there, and it was him. He had stood up out of his bed, and he was looking right at me. So I got on his track, and I followed him quite a ways and jumped him two or three more times. He was tired. You know, end of the season, they're pretty tired, but then they're not running 10 mm-hmm. miles. And uh, he'd come to uh, he come down to the end of the lake there, and the lake I'm talking about, it's got a kind of a peninsula in the end of it, halfway down the lake with a set of narrows where it almost comes together. Well, the, the main part of the lake was froze, and there was one big bay there that wasn't froze, and I figured the narrows wouldn't be froze. Well, I had fired at him once, missed him, And he headed for those narrows right out that peninsula. Well, I'm headed out along the peninsula, and the peninsula is probably only 30 feet wide, all covered with spruce. And uh, I'm headed out on his track, and he was running right along the 
kind of the beach. And I just, I just happened to think in my head, I said, if those narrows are partially froze, he won't try to cross them. So I, I jumped over to the other side of the beach, and there was his track. He had run right back by me 30 feet away while I was going up that side. Well, then I knew he was headed right back for the big woods. So I ran down the edge of the beach because they had drained the lake. And I ran down the beach, and I finally I come right around this little bend, and there he was. I could see him. He was just kind of leaping through the swale grass, headed back in. Well, I fired at him, had my Remington 7600 pump, fired at him with open sights there. And I see him kind of hunch up a little bit. So I get up there, and I look, and there was a little bit of blood, and, and I could see he was dragging one leg. I'd hit him right in the rear leg and broke his leg. So I said, well, I got him now. I said, he won't go far. Well, I tracked him, and he went right up every knob just like he'd never even broke a leg. Didn't even phase Unreal, him. Huh? Yeah. Three or four hours of this just, you know, and, and I'd keep jumping him, and he'd go ahead, and he'd just wait, and he'd watch for me on the next knob. And uh, finally kind of working along his track there, and I said, man, because he wasn't very far ahead of me you know, probably like two, 300 yards all the time, but he was just a smart old buck, and he, he'd make loops around, and I tried to loop him two or three times, and he always knew what I was going to do. So he he turned left like he was going to go back down to the end of the lake and uh, towards the dam. So when he turned left to go back down towards the lake, he, I said, man, I, he's going he's gonna to get in that lake for sure or s- try to swim that open bay because I had seen that one big bay wasn't froze. So I started running on his track, well, I, I actually ran right by him. He jumped up off to my left, and I, I was going so fast, I couldn't slow down because I was trying to get down to the lake. <laughs> right? And had my hat on backwards. And You were serious then if your hat oh, was yeah. on backwards. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and, aerodynamics. Uh, aerodynamics, yeah. And I usually do that anyway when I'm tracking this because you've, you're always going under stuff, and the sweat's just... Usually rolling off me all day, right, yeah. right from the time we start. And uh, so he he veered off to the left, and I never got a shot at him, and he was headed right for the lake. Well, I got down, and I heard a car splash. I got down to the edge, and I looked, and he's out there swimming probably 100 yards. I mean, he could a deer can swim faster than a dog, really, and you wouldn't believe it unless you saw it. Even with a broken leg. With, right, right yeah. with his rear, rear leg broke. And... There was probably three foot waves. It was real windy, and it was cold, and the shoreline was all froze with ice. You couldn't even get down over the rocks or anything. And he was out there swimming, and you could see him in the waves. The waves would hit him and just splash right off his antlers and his ears. So I knew I couldn't shoot him in the water. So I ducked back in the woods, and I ran down the shoreline. I see where he was headed, down the edge of the lake. So I ran down the shoreline, kind of paralleled him, and I stayed up in the woods. Well, I got up parallel with him, and I just kind of stayed along with him. Finally, he veered in. He thought he was far enough away from me to get away. He veered in towards shore. When he got in towards shore, I fired at him, hit him right in the head. Well, when I hit him in the head, he fell over backwards twice, right back into the lake. Well, the, the waves were so rough, it was almost like a current that sucked him out into the lake. And he disappeared. <laughs> oh, I'm like, geez, great. <laughs> Work, I worked all day, eight, eight, nine hours tracking this buck, and I just lost him. I said, he's probably gone. And uh, and, he, and it was so rough, you couldn't see him floating because he, he had flipped over. And really? Just his white belly, you know, and it kind of blended in with the uh, waves. Yeah. Yeah, the white caps, yeah. So I got a hold of Dad. We, I got a hold of Dad. We had radios then. I got a hold of Dad, and I said, yeah, I got him. And uh, he had gone, driven up to a top of a mountaintop, so he... He was probably like four miles from me. And I said, yeah, I got him. I said, but he, he fell in the lake. And I says, I can't find him. And he says, well, he's got to be there. He says, he won't sink. He's going to float. Hey, it's Hal here. I want to talk to you about a new partnership we have with Yokohama Tires. And uh, at Big Woods Bucks, we don't take our partnerships lightly. Uh, we focus on things that we can use and uh, can believe in and trust and, and uh I've been running a set of the uh, Yokohama Geolander MTs for uh, oh about a month now. And uh, over the years, we've had a lot of trouble in the woods, you know, with gravel roads, shale roads, and flat tires and stuff. And and uh, 
So I tried these tires out on a moose hunt, and uh, they worked fabulous. You know, I had no problems with them and uh, still testing them. But the thing I like, too, is I made a trip to New York, and they're, they're for a mud tire, they're extremely quiet on the road. Probably the most quiet ones I've had for an aggressive tread tire. And uh, so I'm going to keep at testing them here, but uh, I think they're going to be the ticket. I've I've used dozens of different tires over the years, and these look like they're going to be the ticket. So anyways, the, the tires are made right here in the USA down in Virginia, all the light tires, light truck and car tires. Uh, well, there's like 51 sizes available, and they also have a Geolanda XAT as a new tire that it's a little less aggressive, like more of an all-season radial. So anyways, check out their website, Yokohama Tire, and see if it's something you can use. Hey, everyone. Hal here. Just want to take a minute to talk a minute about uh, the Woodman Arms muzzleloader. We, uh, we got them all set on the website to build your own and uh, or buy your uh, Big Woods Bucks model, either one you want to do. But anyways, we've tested a lot, and it's... I can honestly say it's the most accurate muzzle loader on the market, best to carry in the big woods or anywhere else at five and a half pounds. You can't go wrong with it. So get on there and check it out. So I just started combing the shoreline. I walked all the way down to this big cove where the waves are coming in, walked halfway around the lake, nothing. And I'd made my third trip. And, of course, it was treacherous with all that ice frozen on all those rocks and everything. So I was kind of working along and, I just looked down, and there he was. He had floated almost a quarter of a mile down that shoreline, and I got him up on the shore, dragged him up. But nice. Yeah, yeah. He he dressed out 221 the last day of rifle season. Yeah, that's wow. A big yeah. Buck. yeah. yeah. yeah Washed us, up on shore took like us the a next whole day hit. to get him out. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I bet. Yeah, yeah. That's and a I good did, rack on him. These, yeah, eight point. Yeah, yeah. And I I had um, firing at him while he was running from me. I had actually hit him in and broken one point you can see in the picture i, sh I shot the point shot off. it right off yeah. yeah but his his leg was broken when you got him out. oh yeah. yeah it was it was broken just hanging by the skin wow yeah. tough tough bucks yeah oh they go forever well good thing you got him though because you saved him a bad winter yeah yeah coyotes would have got oh, yeah. him for sure mm. yeah yeah persistence yeah. that's it yeah. just stay keeping with, after him stay with them day after day yeah yeah Especially if you wound one, you get you owe it to yourself to keep, on, keep at it. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, it, everyone always hears these stories of everyone keeping after it and getting their buck and shooting and always ending up. But how many times between, you know, everyone out there listening, how many times have you chased a buck through all that and never got a shot or got shots and never, Yeah. you know, it's, oh, it's endless. Probably, t you know, 10 or 15 times to everyone yeah. that, that you would get it. You know. Sometimes people, especially the new hunters trying to get into tracking and stuff, think it's just we all just go out and shoot one, but it's really that ain't the reality. You know, you gotta It's not that easy. No, you gotta <laughs> keep even for us it ain't that easy. I always you, said there's no easy ones no. when it comes to up in the mountains. There's I no like, easy ones. I like how you describe the sweat from from the time you start to the time oh. you end because I I thought it was just me. <laughs> yeah, no. Because you ask Hal, Hal says, oh, I don't sweat. Oh, yeah. I do all yeah. day. I weigh 150 pounds, Lee, soaking wet. Yeah. And uh, I sweat from the minute, I, you know, I'm not a slow tracker. I'm, yeah. a, I'm an aggressive tracker. And, yeah. and I've, I've taken a lot of guys that want to go track and look back 20 minutes later and yeah, they're gone. It they works, don't it? Truck. Yeah. yeah, it does. Yeah. 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 It does. It's a good deterrent. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've got friends that come up from the south, and and yeah, they all it takes is one time for them, and they're all done. Yeah, they're yeah. anyone that's used to sitting all the time, right? Which I'm not opposed to. Yeah, certain types of hunting, but man, if you're gonna track, but you all, gotta want to go. All of us right here. You know, all of us guys sitting right here, we've all, that's how we've hunted our whole life is we walk, yeah. you know, all day long and look for sign and we're just not, I mean, don't yeah. get me wrong. I've done my share of tree stand hunting in different places and, yeah. you, you know, when the weather's not right, but it's usually the last half hour, or hour in the evening, sit down. Or something. And it's according to where you are too. I mean, some yeah, places exactly. are just not conducive to walking around or, Ex yeah, you know, exactly. so. But up here, yeah, it's sitting is sitting is effective. Yeah, but yeah. 
Yeah, we've had it's lots of guys so. get bucks sitting over the years guiding. Yeah. Sometimes it's easier if they're patient to do that. It's it's their best best chance if they're used to sitting, you know. I was talking about that. We'd mentioned it before, that big one that young fella got way back when we first started doing them remote hunts there that had that tall eight-point rack there. Tall yeah, eight-point. That was a beauty. Yeah, beauty. You seen yeah. that one? Oh, oh, my God. Man, that was a nice deer. Yeah, that thing gross like 184 or something, you know. Yeah. Crazy. But um, too bad we didn't have more like that. Yeah, uh, I know. Yeah. yeah. So, anyway, Al's it, got one like that. I do. <laughs> I Chained up it. somewhere. I haven't got him yet. Chained up. <laughs> well, I was gonna say you've got one on your mind like that, but yeah, we all got one on our mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, that guy said he could sit, so I put him in there and he sat. You know, luckily he got it the first day, but just what it is. You gotta have some patience if you're gonna sit. Yeah. yeah, that was just a rub line you saw in there where we had it all tore up, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a. It went down through this. I found it. I found it the week before, and it was a. I found this brown ash spot, and it was all rubbed up, and uh, there was two trails. It was down in some you know low ground there, where a lot of times in that low stuff you can see trails they've oh, used yeah. for years, you know. Yeah. And there was two trails that that cross paths right there. It was like an intersection, you know, and. So I just look, kind of looked it all over, and then I, I went up the trails. And when I went up one about, I don't know, 30 yards from the intersection, there was a uh, a big, what I call them annual scrapes made every year. It was like eight, Take, in, eight yeah. inches deep, you know, yeah. right under a spruce size tree. size of a hood of a pickup. Yeah. yeah. You can see, I'm like, that thing is there all the time. So I said, well, combination of this, this buck's traveling here, you know. So... I set him on a stone. It was a boulder there with a bunch of little fir trees growing on it. It was about, I don't know, six or eight feet high, and he shinnied up on that and, and uh, shot him at 11 o'clock the first day. But I did have a guy there the week before for two days, but he'd come out for lunch every day. He'd go in That's a, way sitting, back in. Yeah. For sitting, like Dad and I hunted Saskatchewan for years, 10 to 2. Yeah. You kill all your big bucks. Yeah. 10 yeah. to 2. He shot that one at, yeah. uh, I think it was 1130. Yeah. He shot that buck. Yeah. Yeah. It is funny how people put our schedule onto deer. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. know? And, and there's yeah. like this this idea that, I mean, morning and evenings are active times for deer, but yeah. especially this time of year, all bets are off. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, any time they're going to come through. So I always figured they, if they're running all night, they're tired and they lay down around daylight or something and exactly by 10 o'clock they're ready right. to go again yep. they got rested yep. up and yep. they get up and head out again you know yep. yeah yeah lane benoit told me that first time i ever met him you know i was pumping him full of questions there he'd pick me up on a tote road yeah out back of addy and then i said when do you shoot most of your bucks he said well he said time you get on a track and you know start following it and he said you'll gonna come to his bed he said about nine ten o'clock he and he said he just got up and he says you shoot most of them right in the middle of the day hmm. yeah yep. it, you know and i look back now and probably 90 percent of them all the middle of the day yeah yeah yep. i don't think i've ever shot anything early or late no all me either <laughs> real early or real late nothing exactly <clears throat> unless i was you know on a track and had wounded one or, or something why the hell have we been getting up so early all these years <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> I'm sleeping in. Hey, yeah. the last yeah. the last five years we went to Saskatchewan, everybody would get up at 4 a.m. and and go hunt. And Dad would say, nope. He said, he'd tell the guy to come back, pick me up at 8. And he says, I'll go to my stand. And two different years in a row, he shot the biggest buck out of the camp. <laughs> no <laughs> kidding. Yeah, he only hunted like four hours a day. Yeah. 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 Huh. He says, after 2 yeah. o'clock, there's nothing. You know, but we've been doing it for... 25 yeah. years right yeah yeah hey you so you had said when we talked about you know sweating all day yeah and when i come up to see you the other day remember we got talking about um how a, a buck will get going along and they get that gate going and they just go and go and oh, go oh yeah all they're like an ever ready bunny yeah yeah they go all day yeah and if you don't pick the pace up yeah. you'll never catch them right you know so and a lot of guys We'll go in and they're they're still hunting a, a track. track. Yeah, they, and, they, and they say, like, "Well, I never caught up with that buck." Well, they hunt like Elma Fudd. <laughs> <laughs> Remember the guy going to find that? I take offense to that, Al. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I still can't get over the guy in, at the sports. You don't hunt show that, that way, do you, Joe? No, God, no. <laughs> <laughs> guy, I hunt too fast, probably. The guy at the sportsman down. show yeah. said to me one yeah. day, he says, <laughs> if a buck doesn't do what I want it to do in the first 200 yards, I go back to the truck and find another one. <laughs> like, Perfect. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't Perfect. do what I want it to do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. shit. He hit, a guy like that had a lot of uh, adrenaline. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, he had a lot of something. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't gumption, I can tell you that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, so you got to you get on them tracks in the morning. You got to make your time up then. That's when yeah. you got to just Yeah, exactly. And I got to pr- I don't run. I don't I mean, I I well, go right along. Sometimes but, I'll run it like if I jump one and, yeah. and I'm thinking I kind of second guess where he's going to go next and if there's an opening or or a tote road or Oh yeah, run or, to or that. the edge yeah. of a bluff or something. I'll, I'll just make a split decision, and I mean, there's a lot of bucks I've killed over the years just making a split yeah. decision like that, split second. Just there it is, and, yeah. that, and yep. that's just Go experience, right. you know. Yeah, the Jumping. last yeah. last day last year, it was the <laughs> last day of black powder, so it was the last day of the season last year. Uh, I did that, and I took the track up. I waited for daylight. I found the track crossing the road, waited for daylight, threw on my snowshoes, and. He was down there 100 yards in the woods bedded. You know, I just, yeah. I never expected to jump him that quick, yeah. you know. Yeah. He was right there. You never know. Yeah. You don't. Yeah. But the tracks were going the way I wanted them to, so I stayed on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I did that snowshoe thing with a client yeah. once. I don't think Hal was so happy, but it almost worked. Mm. <laughs> we got close. Yeah. 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 It's tough on snowshoes. It's just it's such a big footprint. Yeah. You yeah. Know? We went into a spot on a snowmobile. And had gone all the way in, and he didn't act real anxious. And I kind of told him, I says, if we don't cut a buck track, then uh, we won't waste too much time. And we came back out, and by Jesus, the buck had crossed that snowmobile track. And I'm like, all right, buddy, here we go. Yeah, this is pretty fresh. So I drove down that road a mile. I actually put his snowshoes on for him because <laughs> he never oh, had them that's on. Nice. <laughs> and I, I said, could I could see you two out there and you tied doing his laces for him and everything. <laughs> <laughs> Could you give him a kiss after too? <laughs> Tell him to have a good day. Give I him a little bag lunch. <laughs> I hate it when you show your jealous side. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. <clears throat> <coughs> Anyways, we never, headed up over this mountain. He's never going to help you put your snowshoes no, on. No, never. <laughs> never. Get up, get up. Anyways, <laughs> we get up to the top, and I see this. It's like a five-pointer, a little six-pointer basket rack thing. And he's just walking out of sight. And I says, right there, shoot him. And he pulled his gun up, and the deer just disappeared into the green growth, and he was gone. And I said, geez, I think we can cut him off if we kind of circle up around. He's like. These snowshoes aren't as easy as they look. <laughs> and that was it. That was my sign. He yeah. was done. Yeah. He was yeah. done, yeah. 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 So, you know, that was the only time we ever had a client on snowshoes that I know of. Mine, anyways. I think I only tried that one time way back in the 80s there. We'd gone, we used to go to New Brunswick for a week, and their last week of the season was like the week before Thanksgiving. So we'd go up there then. And when we were up there, we got a Big snowstorm up there. It was like one of the big northeasters. Got over two feet of snow and drifts. Oh. Yeah, well, we, going. Yeah, and they got it here too. I can't. It was in the eighties, mid eighties or something. And uh, well, I had my, I had my hunting camp. The the old mobile home we used to have for a hunting camp back in the woods up here, because we were going to hunt Thanksgiving week. And uh, so we got back from that, and then Sunday we headed up here. Uh, me and my, it was just me and my father too. And I said, we better bring two vehicles. We knew the snow was up here too. So we both, I had my, back then it was a, we both had short bed Dodge pickups, but mine had the lift kit and stuff like my Ram Charger. And we headed in, it was back into all the brook in there and the snow was deep. We was pushing it right along with the bumper there and it wasn't broke out. Some of the hills one of us would go as far as they could go and then back up off a little bit, and the other one would right. go. We broke that road all the way in there. I don't, it took us all day to get in there, buried in there. And I'm like, I'm, <laughs> all I'm thinking about is how the heck we ever going to get the camper out of there, you know? Yeah. But anyways, <laughs> it started raining that night. Yeah, it was two feet of snow, and it started raining on it. Uh. And it rained, and the first day was soft, you know, it was soft and stuff. 
and then it froze up tight and not enough to hold you you know one of them crusts and i'm oh, like yeah boy this is going to be bad for everybody the deer for us so yeah, everybody yeah i had brought snowshoes and i tried it but I went one day like that with the snowshoes and stuff, and I said, this they, ain't going to work They could hear either. you a half a mile. Oh, yeah. yeah. I tried it. And and back then, that's back when the, the coyotes were getting thick in there, and every deer track you come to had a, one or two coyotes on it. And that's I think that was the year I decided to get out of there. You know, we weren't going to – I know it was. We were getting out of there and trying something different. So we ended up leaving that camper in there and went back the next weekend and – we got it out finally with, we had two two trucks, six cents of chains, and 10 done come along and everything <laughs> else, and we got it to town, and we never, I never went back hunting there again. We started <laughs> hunting other places, but that was my only try on snowshoes. I mean, I've pushed snow like everybody, you know. I'd rather push snow up over my knees and snowshoe it. Yeah, yeah. me too. Yeah. Yeah. I, it's funny, I... When I was in looking, and I was in a piece of woods yesterday. The last time I was in it was last year in that deep snow. And I went walking across the cut. And the last time I went across that cut, which is only is probably 150 yards that I had to cross there, I bet it took me 20 minutes, 25 minutes across it last year because it was, it was literally, it was all windblown. It was waist deep snow yeah, trudging yeah, wow. through there. I felt like one of those deer you see when they're up to their, <laughs> yeah. up to their neck. <laughs> Helpless. Yeah. yeah. It's, too much of a good thing sometimes yeah yeah i don't think we'll see snow like that in deer season again for a while like i told yeah that's the second time i've ever seen it like that up here the yeah. other time was in 1991 it started like that yeah we of, hunted our snowmobile that year we had so much yeah i had yeah. to get that buck i shot out on the the back side of the mountain there by snowmobile and it was I, that's the one I tell about. I, I didn't know if I was going to find it. It snowed so much in the night. Everything was laid down. and Right. That we had to go with uh, Tommy Drew helped me. We knew it was snow machines. And we finally, I found it and we got it out of there. Old but, Tommy uh, or young Tommy? Young Tom. Young yeah. Tom, yeah. 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 We had to wait for him to, uh, we had, before we could even get in the Kelly Dam Road, we had to wait for the road grader to come. And when the road grader went down through the snow banks were five, six feet high. Wow. And that was the, that was the, end of the second week oh wow that yeah. shortens up the track in <laughs> yeah they were filing <laughs> yeah. Yeah. they were filing out of there because the next week was that was the that was the year i met chris chris and marcus come up oh and yeah i had them the next week and uh huh. it was uh it was buried right up you know the mountains were worse you know north of town was way more that and, was back though when we had yards everywhere yeah out through yep. the woods yeah yeah they still come to they were still they didn't come all the way around town like they did but there was still that deer yard on the north side behind tommy drew's right parents house there yeah. the, he said that started in in the in 75 about there was a few deer stayed yeah and that's how that developed but yeah they used to yard all the way up to like little big wood and all that and uh but them guys killed him and his family they killed like five nice bucks there the third week they were all following them does right down into, right into the, the yard. Yeah. yeah, yeah, right down in, and they Single were get, file. They were yeah. getting close to the town where the snow wasn't. It wasn't nearly as deep when you got you know down around town. It never is, but yeah. So hopefully, it's another twenty years or so before we see it again. Uh, I don't. Yeah. Mind. Yeah, I wouldn't <laughs> say hopefully. It's better than. <coughs> well, that much snow. Right. I mean, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't. That, I looked yeah. on. Uh, um, website the guy i used to go in saskatchewan last night and he had a pretty big buck on there and, and uh it looked like a foot of snow up there already yeah really yeah, yeah it's so right on the other side of the st lawrence it keeps they they're gonna keep have getting a them. tough winter i think you ever track up there yep where was that at? saskatchewan saskatchewan yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. it's 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 tough tracking up there though because it's it's uh what i want it's kind of like Alaska. They've got so much under. It's all this hardwood underbrush. You know, it's um, willows and, and everything, and they've grown in so tight, and, and the deer basically can put their head down and, and go through all this stuff, and you spend 50% of your time on your knees. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. Well, and it's familiar what, with this. Huh? <laughs> He said he's familiar I said with that. 
<laughs> I ain't the one with a hole in my uh, knees. This uh, is a kid. Hey, hey, family friendly. Back <laughs> off. Back off. Too far. There must be more. There's a lot of deer tracks, too, to get tangled. A in lot there. of deer tracks, yeah. yeah. That yeah. was a trouble in Ontario when we first started yeah. going. You get on. You get on a buck track, next thing you know, you got three of the same size, all in the same track. Right, you know? all in the same trail. You never yeah. knew if you were back on the same one or not. Yeah. yeah. Montana was like that, too. Really, yeah. I never hunted Montana. Yeah, out where we hunt out in the western part in the mountains. It's kind of like hunting here. It's mountains, but they're yeah. just a little bigger. Right. And the big bucks stay stay higher up. That's where they live all summer, but the snow gets up there first. Just like a mule deer. Mule yeah, deer the big, more snow they get, high. it starts bringing them down. So yeah. sometimes it'll be still like almost bare ground in the valley or maybe an inch or two, and you try to go up high and it's two feet. Yeah. So what happens, it drives them down, and when it does, they get thick down in the bottom. And, I mean, it's, it's ridiculous, really, yeah. trying to track. I mean... If you got, you know, a freshened up snow, it's all right. But once you go through a day or two with no snow, yeah, yeah. it's almost impossible. You can pick along. You're almost still hunting the tracks is what you're doing. Yeah. You can't make enough time. You're always trying to sort it out and figure it out. And, but you can also bump into other ones while you're doing it, so it makes it pretty good. Did, did you ever, I know you were going to, um, you were getting the Onyx app. Did you ever end up? I, yeah, I do have the Onyx. Did you use it when you were out west? I, no, I didn't have it then. Oh, okay. No, no yeah. I didn't have it then. But I've used it. I've used it quite a bit, just scouting around. Yeah. Down here, and I like it. It, it works. Do you have the whole really um, satellite image on your yeah. phone now? Yeah. 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 I do. Yeah. I, that is handy, ain't it? I upgraded to the premium. Yeah. It, nice. It's, it's worth it. Yeah. Because it, it gives you everything. It gives you the overlays, it, all the topos. It know, is nice. It's great. The, the best in. I forgot a couple times. I've got them all downloaded now, but I've gone into some new areas, and before I left service, I forgot to download the off-grid. So that's an important thing if yes. you're going. Make sure, make and sure I, you download it. Right? I do the five-mile squares because it's, it's more resolution, and obviously you want the most resolution you can get, so I'd rather just take up the memory in my phone and, and do yeah. that. So, But it's, uh, I'll get into a spot, and I'll, now I've, I've become where I really like using it. You know, I'll pull it out a lot, and then... It's uh well you can you look at a, you if you hunt an unfamiliar spot you can look at the terrain yeah ahead of you it's just like being in your plane right you know well uh, um, almost yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, hey. I like it you can tell the difference in the the hardwood and the softwood too you know yeah, exactly. enough different colors so you can yeah you can tell that and then the bogs and all of that stuff yeah. pretty yeah. handy I, I was thinking that have you ever seen the uh um one of the foresters we can talk snowmobile on Alley. All right. I was over meeting with one of the, the landowners uh regarding some snowmobile trails and they pulled up a they pulled up a program they have and it's it's uh it's specific to their company. They have to hire the, the the people to go out and do it, but they fly over and they have a special radar that can can uh basically distinguish the growth. And so they have all their maps, of their land, and it's all broke down to exactly what's growing there, and 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 it's and it's within the elevations are within like one foot. Wow! So it shows yeah. every, cool. and they can turn yeah. it three D, and it shows every single little That's valley cool. and yeah. and mm. oh, yeah. is it? It's really nice, but I'm sure it's pretty pricey doing. You know, they do just their land, but right. yeah. it was pretty cool looking at it. So cool. maybe Onyx can. Get that on there. Yeah. That'd be slick. Pretty good. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it is. Theirs like is it. real accurate. The, yeah. the topo yeah. stuff is yeah. special. I used to use my, you know, download the, the state maps and my GPS. And like Wyoming, you buy a hunt chip and it shows all your trails, all your horse trails, all the, all the court, you know, all the elevation lines. It's just three, yeah. three dimensional. And I mean, and now Onyx does that. Now Onyx has got it, and, and I mean, it, it's just yep. awesome. Yeah, Onyx actually gives you what I like about Onyx, though, is it gives you that you know three Google Earth three D. So whereas the, the GPS, you just right. get the topo, right, right, and, and then the, it tells you your land more detail. Your yeah. landowner is important out west because right. you can't. Yeah, very important. Go yeah. on private land out there right. without permission. Right. I guess without permission. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. We wanted to <clears throat> give a little uh, special, uh, special, special shout out here to uh, Nolan Nowinski. 
Nolan Nowinski. You know who that is, Hal? I don't know him, but I know he's over in Afghanistan somewhere listening to our podcast until he falls asleep at night. So we yeah, appreciate yeah. that. Yeah, right. it, it's uh, Nolan's from Wisconsin and just sent us a nice email. It's yeah. nice, nice to hear when you got people on the other side of the world that are dealing with, right? Yeah, keeping us safe. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And yeah, uh, so we can do what we do. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So we appreciate it, Nolan. And yeah, we're going to. Uh, he's been trying to uh, join the hunting club, and for some reason, isn't going through. And sometimes it's the, I don't know if it's the computers they have overseas for him or what. But so, anyways, we're going to give him a uh, free membership to the hunting club. And uh, nice. Chris will get it set up for him somehow, however he does it, if he can't do it online with a phone call or something, and be a new club member. Nice. He can yeah. show all his buddies over there videos and stuff, uh, films. It, it is pretty cool. You never think, I mean, when we, when we started this, you kind of think about just the main, you know, it's about Maine, and we're, right. we're tracking in Maine. That's where the bulk of the hunting is. But the reach is pretty far with this thing. I remember the first mm-hmm. the first – episode we did we had downloads in almost all 50 states i think it was like 49 states i think hawaii was the only one that we didn't have downloads from from the first episode and then uh now we're i thought chris is getting stuff from well over obviously afghanistan new zealand we've had some you know around the world several of of, uh people overseas servicemen and then the uh there's a guy from australia that's he's uh booking a hunt for next year coming from australia yeah nice. no kidding nice yeah he, they have some did you know the snow in australia i didn't i didn't either but no. they got mountains down in the south and they get snow and they hunt samba deer ha. in the woods yeah they're they look a little bit like a a big sitka deer or something you know right. yeah. Nice. yeah but uh he said they're real wary and they're in the woods and he wants to come here and track so he can learn how to track samba deer they're imported from india yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. pretty cool though. I always said if you learn how to track deer in Maine, you can hunt anywhere. Yeah. Everything yeah. else is anywhere. easier. Ain't Everything's it? easier. Yeah. yeah. I don't care. Yeah. Everybody thinks elk and everything else is hard to hunt, but no, elk, it's all easier than to me. Elk hunting's yeah. pretty easy. Yeah. yeah. Get a little snow and yeah. That's what makes it fun. Is that it's oh, a challenge. I, yeah. You know, it's, it's a challenge. Fun. You know. Yeah. I mean, that's what we're all here for, and it's yeah. When yeah. you absolutely when you when you do finally connect, it's. It's a good feeling. I yeah. can't pick an easy sport. Can you? <laughs> <laughs> it's like trapping. All I want to yeah. trap is beaver. And everybody <laughs> says, why do you want to trap beaver? It's the most work. I said, I think that's it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We had more rewarding. Yeah. yeah. We yeah. had uh, yeah. <clears throat> my first moose hunt, which was a, a good friend there. Uh, that second week, it was uh, Troy's brother. We lost Troy yeah. last year. And so his, his, uh, his brother and son were up. They got pulled for the moose hunt, so we had a great time. But anyway, we're driving down the road, and uh, he says, so do you have many beavers around here? And I said, oh, yeah, there's, we got a lot of beavers. Oh, there's one right there. He said, right out his window, and there's a beaver <laughs> working on the side of the road. <laughs> and we sat there for 20 minutes watching this beaver work, hauling wood and What's everything. What's the odds of that? Couldn't <laughs> believe it. Yeah. 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 It was pretty funny. Yeah. But anyway, so Lee's, Lee's film, uh, by the time this is – this is on. Uh, it'll be uh, premiered. Yeah. You're going to enjoy that one, Rick. You haven't seen that. It, no, it was I haven't. His hunt last year. Maybe yeah. we'll punch yeah. it up so we can watch it before he leaves today. Yeah, yeah, That'd we can. Be good. Yeah, yeah, I'd like to see it. Yeah, it's. Yeah. Uh, it was a lot of fun to do. It actually. I know we were disappointed that we didn't get it earlier, but it actually went to two film festivals and actually won best main film. Wow! In the main film festival, which it's a 17 minute awesome. short. Yeah. Uh, and I don't, I think it came out pretty good, but I don't really like to see myself on camera that much, but I think it came out pretty good. <laughs> None no, of us do. Nobody well. does. Uh, <laughs> it did got, come out really good. Yeah, it's well yeah. done. So we're, yeah, it's, I hope everybody enjoys it. And like I said, 17 minutes, you said 17 minutes. Yeah. It was actually yeah. filmed as a part of another documentary series. No kidding. And it came nice. out good, and the guy that shot it said, we got to send this to film festival, which ended up 
you know, working out for the best. Like everything oh. in my world, it all works you, out in the end. You should have saw Lee. He was kicking and screaming. He's like, I'm getting my attorneys involved. And he, was just, <laughs> he had yeah. these big shot New York attorneys. Yeah, that were, yeah. <laughs> or none of that happened. Yeah, none of that happened. But I, I just want to do more. I want to do more. It's, it's uh, – fun to do it's fun yeah. to do yeah, yeah. and yeah. it's good to share with these people i talked to a fellow the other day that um you know he's an avid hunter but he only gets one week a year <clears throat> yeah and i was and, gonna say how, how many of those tracking films do you do that just don't work out all day long oh most you know, of them right yeah most right. of so, them so to get that one day yeah. is yeah yeah and i think if we could capture the season between six or eight of us you know what i mean and Yep. And give enough content so that our viewers can can keep inspired all summer yes. long. Yeah, right. You know, the way we are. The way we are. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I remember when I first met Rick, and I. <laughs> uh oh. I, yeah. No, I mean we 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 met at uh, our daughters played softball together. Yeah. They were good friends, and so. We met at a softball game. We missed and, the whole game. Yeah, pretty much every game. <laughs> <laughs> we were Telling always off stories. talking hunting. <laughs> but yeah. I said, I asked Rick, I said, uh, let me follow you with a camera this season. And he, he had no interest in it then. Nope. No. No. Nope. It was I'm tough enough. Hunting. I said, it's tough enough to, to kill a big buck. I says, man, I don't yeah. want somebody with me with a camera. Yeah. yeah. But, well, maybe we'll talk you into it one day. Yeah, once well, you see these film. Yeah, as you get older, that and yeah. it goes back to it, yeah. a lot of it's not about the killing. You know, we got it yeah. happened to work out right. good. I can tell you, it's almost impossible to find the right cameraman that has the talent to do what they do, and the physical oh, he's gotta ability. Be just, he's got to be just like you, and the physical he has ability. To be. Yep. He has to think exactly like you. Yeah, yeah every, I, every the next move and. No, that you know, this kid was, and you'll see the reason I picked him was because he's actually in a political sense from the other side of the aisle, and I really wanted to see what the other side saw. Yeah, you know yeah. how they their perception of us is. Yeah, and it worked out good because all we came up with two hand signals, and the the fingers going forward was come. <laughs> yeah, and the and the fist going up was stop. Right. But every, I'm taking and, notes. Yeah, and step <laughs> in my foot tracks. Do not, you know. And once exactly. in a while, they tap me on the shoulder and say, "Lib, I got to get this shot." And I was patient enough to say, at first, I'm like, "We'll go back and get this later." No, we got a we got three days of B-roll after we had killed the buck. Not sixty seconds of that B-roll ended up in that 17 minute film. Yeah, yeah. Sixteen minutes of that's from that day. Right. And I was just amazed that. You know, it worked out good. Yep, worked out yeah, good. Yeah, I'm anxious to see it. Yeah. yeah. Good. All right. Well, we want to <clears throat> thank everyone for listening. We really uh, we you, enjoy doing this. What are you, cutting us off? Yeah, something like that. Well, geez, we gone. We had like another 50 stories to tell. Well, give us one more. <laughs> you got one more good one? <laughs> we got no uh, time constraints. No. All we have to do no. is put up a game poll today. Yeah. I saw it laying on the ground out there when I drove in. Oh, yeah. You like yeah. that? Yeah. Custom made. Yeah. It doesn't or look like. Or it was a swing set. doesn't look like you break that one in half. <laughs> no. 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 We're going to try, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So. Oh, I, one thing I will, uh, Hal and I were talking about the other day, how important it is when you, anybody learning how to track or whatever, when you find a big buck track and they think they're going to jump right on it up in these big woods and sometimes it's you know five miles over a mountain and to the closest road and it's nothing for a big buck especially once the rut's going on and, and even post rut to travel 10 or 12 miles in a straight direction looking for a doe so you know I've always and and I learned this probably from the time I was a cat hunter and uh hunting with dick drysdale when i was like eight years old we'd always put our initials in the track well any other hunter usually respects that if a guy stopped put his is that initials, right yes so don't i cross never heard my, that don't cross my initials out and put yours in <laughs> <laughs> it step right in your initials and get on the track <laughs> yeah. freaking right. that's, that's happened quite a bit but anyway so you know and and you learn this after hours and hours and hours and miles of just sweating you come out to another road 
and you haven't even jumped the buck and and uh you know it's 10 11 o'clock in the morning and he hasn't even got to where he laid down yet so it, how important it is and, and that's why we start at sometimes 4 a.m 5 a.m in the morning and yeah once we once we located a big buck and you know where he lives you're going to go back and we'll make that complete loop to make sure he's in that block of woods i, I was going to say that's something i do if it's a piece that i know and i know all the yeah. roads around <clears throat> If I cross that track, yeah. I'll run right around. And you'll recognize that track. track. Sure. If, it's a, if it's a big, you know, whether he's got a round toe or a pointed toe or one hoof soft set, you, you'll recognize that track if he's gone through. Yeah. yeah. That, that's something that we've talked about before. I don't know if we did when you were here, but how when you're following a track just after a few hours, that track is so ingrained in your mind. Oh, yeah. That you can just glance. If there's other tracks other around, tracks, you can you just, just glance. Follow it right right out. Yeah. yeah. It's an imprint. But, you know, if, if you've got, a let's say, a lake like Palin here, and you cut a track on the back of the mountain coming down towards the lake, really all you need to do is just make a half-moon circle around that lake. And if you don't cut his track, you, you know he's in there laying on that ridge somewhere or, or chasing a doe in there or tending one or something. I never did to leave a track, a good track, to go look around, unless I left somebody standing. <laughs> <in it. laughs> yeah. that, that's why. We're, that's why I usually where I am. There's no roads up ahead. Well, <laughs> right. We know. We yeah. know if you just go in the woods a couple hundred yards and then back to the truck, most people won't take it anyways because they'll right. think yeah. you know you're on it. And I've yeah. seen guys do it. and yeah. I've picked the track. Up I've and walked on with it. I shouldn't tell this one, but <laughs> I walk out backwards to. That's what, what I did. Think, too, yeah. But I'm thinking, oh, there's two guys going in on this one. Yeah. <laughs> I, I will I walk in there about 50 yards yeah. into a stick and then walk, and then walk right back. Yeah. Yeah. And they'll say, oh, he's got that one. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's a secret we wasn't supposed to give up. Yeah. <laughs> another yeah. thing I learned, I'll tell you another thing I learned one year was don't trust, you know, when you drive, sometimes <laughs> you're driving down a road and you see where somebody got out and looked at a track. Yes. Yeah. And yes. they got back in the truck and drove off, so your first instinct is, I must not be any oh, good, no, and you yeah. drive oh. off. Yeah. Don't go no, by that. Go never. Because a lot of people right. are just looking at them. They, they got no yeah. intention yeah. of No interest in tracking. They're no. just looking at them. No. Yeah. 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 That yeah. big one I killed in New Hampshire. Yeah. I got up early, hit that uh that road and i'm cruising in and i'm cruising two inches of fresh snow i come around the corner and there's three pickup trucks in a line stopped i'm like son of a gun first guy gets his flashlight out he looks out the window keeps on driving second guy pulls up pulls his flashlight out looks out the window keeps driving third guy stops no flashlight keeps on driving i pull up i look and i'm like i can't really see that good i get out of the truck i walk up into the woods 10 <laughs> yards and he stood all fours and i'm like cool yeah, yeah. two and a half hours later yeah. i killed him it was nice. 198 yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Big eight oh, yeah. only 198 yeah only one yeah if it was three pounds more you'd really have something yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's what yeah. Al, that's what i will tell you probably <laughs> ran it off the night before <laughs> yeah i i, I will yeah. tell you one quick story there um and and it's uh the the last time i ran into Lanny Benoit, and uh, I hadn't seen him in probably 15 years, 20 years over here in, you know, Enchanted and by Spencer Lake and stuff. Yeah. And I was uh, heading up by Sugarloaf, and as soon as we get up to Sugarloaf there, got up the height to land, we had like two inches of snow, wet snow, perfect conditions. And uh, so I pulled in, uh, there was a road that went up in there on the backside of one of those mountains, and I pulled up in this road, and I had Sierra with me, then you know, so this was probably seven, eight. Rick's nine daughter. Years. Yeah, yeah it was my oldest daughter, and she used to hunt with me all the time. So we pull up in that road, and I come to this pretty nice buck track, and I was the first vehicle in, and uh, he looked like you know he was like in the two hundred, two twenty range. I said, boy, that's a nice track, and he was headed uphill. But w lots of times they'll go up and check a ridge, and then just make a loop and go right back down into the bog. So I got out and looked at the track. Didn't put my initials in or nothing, just looked at it and drove all the way to the end of the road. I'm coming back out, and there's a vehicle parked there, and it's just getting light. I mean, you really couldn't even really see yet to start tracking. There was a guy out of the truck looking at it, and I said, oh, geez, probably going to take that track. I should have stayed right here and or put my initials in it, and I didn't. And I got out, and I start walking down towards it, and it was Lanny. And he says, hey, Rick, that you? And I almost didn't recognize him. You know, I hadn't seen him in so long, and... 
I said, yeah, yeah. And I said, hey, Lanny, you know, and he says, you're going to take that buck track right there? And if he's listening, he'll remember which one it was. <laughs> and uh, I said, yeah, I was thinking about it. And he says, yeah, that's one of them old flat footers right there. And he's, you know, he walked with the dew claws out the back. And he left, and I shot that buck. He, I shot that buck within 15 minutes. He had gone up into these strip cuts, and he had laid in between the strip cuts in a little piece of woods. And I was just walking his track up, and it was, and it was a little bit foggy because it had rained, so you couldn't really see real good. And had my gun right up, ready, because I knew he was close. And he jumped up, and he ran away from me towards the other strip cut, so I just ran as fast as I could. And they were probably, what, 50, 75 feet they'll leave in between those strips. I ran right to that outside edge of that cut and just swung my rifle to my shoulder, and he made his first jump right into it, and I fired, pow. Worked my way up there, and I didn't know if I hit him or not. I worked my way up there, and he had landed right into the woods, stone dead, right on the other no side. No kidding. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. What did it weigh? 209. Nice. Yeah, yeah, that was an eight-pointer. Yeah. yeah. A lot of eight-pointers. So what I get from this story, this whole discussion, is every track I get on, I'm putting an RL. <laughs> <laughs> That's a smart move. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to keep everyone off it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hey. and walk out backwards everywhere you go. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is it. We wait all year for... Uh, yeah. We're starting yeah. here in a couple of days. I'm pretty excited about it, all this talk, even though I can't hunt till black powder. We need yeah. some white stuff. Yeah. 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 Hal's working me like a dog. I'm dreaming yeah. of white stuff. We had yeah. we had snow in Wyoming almost every day. Oh, yeah, you kind of deer hunted for elk, didn't you? You said you yeah. track them? Yeah, track them on, on snow. I love tracking nice. those bulls on snow. Oh, yeah. oh, I bet. Yeah. But uh, So anyway, uh, before Hal closes out here, we, we want to just remind you to, uh, on iTunes, give us a review. Only if you like it. If you don't like it, don't review it. Right. Just leave it alone. No thumbs down. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, be sure to go on the YouTube channel and subscribe. And that's how our our sponsors uh, know that everyone's liking it and yeah helps us out. If you're in town hunting, when you're listening to this podcast, stop down to the lodge, check out our game poll. I think. That's some pressure. <laughs> 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 and remember, Joe Cruzy's guiding. So. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Joe will have a sign up by the road. You can hang your deer here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna put meat processing yeah. free. He'd put he'd put ten dollars a night on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can't take this abuse anymore. Oh, shit. Oh. Don't forget to like us on Facebook. Oh yeah. yeah. That one. yeah. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Any other PSAs? I think that's it. Woody's gonna be proud of us. All right. Yeah. Woody tries to keep us in line. He's the brains behind the operation. Yeah. Yep. Keeps things rolling. So. All right. Well, thanks for tuning in. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Yeah. yeah I appreciate anytime, you coming right? up. Thanks, thanks, right? yeah. 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 I thanks for the, the, invi- the invite. You're the only one ever. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lee and I will be out hunting with you next year. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, till oh, I can't say till next w- two weeks. Now it's till next week. Yeah. Good luck oh, on the trail. Did we talk about? Yeah, did we mention that on here? Or was that just with Woody? Yeah, he we're doing Hal already yeah. said. Okay, we're gonna do it every week during Joe the season. Joe did. He's senile. He can't even remember. He no, said. Yeah. well, I know we talked about guys, it. I can never yeah. remember. If we older. talked about it here. I am. Look yeah. at the gray. Yeah, yeah. yeah. got to fit in with you guys. Yeah. Will you guys get my age? Oh, All right. Shit. Till next week. Good luck on the trail. Hey, thanks for tuning in. Till next time. Good luck on the trail.